Welcome back to the garage. We're working on the Yukon XL today, the 2500 rig. Turn you around here. I'll show you what we're going to do. Got her up in the air on some jack stands already. And we're going to put an airbag set up on it. This is a uh, Rough Country full kit. Let's see right here if it says. I thought I had a piece of paper up here that said what it's for. But it's for a, uh, I think, 01 to 2010 truck kit right here. So no lift kit. <clears throat> the only difference in the lift kit is it comes with a big spacer. So I ordered the full kit mainly because this right here. It uh, has a nice little uh, wiring harness with uh, that little tee off, whatever, the diverter switch, air bleed off um, button right here, and that cute little compressor right there. That's that thing right there. Um, definitely, definitely. I know y'all have heard this before, but it looked bigger in the pictures. Goodness, it looked bigger in the pictures. But uh, whatever, it'll do what I need. They don't make the heavy duty bags for these trucks no more. They're discontinued. They make like the little kit. So I'm gonna see if I can make the uh, truck edition on this works. I've seen, back you out here. Some other people have made these work and uh, it came, I downloaded that. It's got some pretty good directions step by step on uh, my phone downloaded here, whatnot. So I'm going to follow those and take you along with me and hopefully it goes along pretty, pretty smooth. It says two and a half hours is the estimated time if you're putting on one of these trucks. So it's me and you're putting it on this truck. It's not supposed to go on. So it's probably going to take like seven days. Here we go. All right. I got the first bag put together here on the next one. I'm going to do the whole next step, step by step, but I'm just going to go along on the passenger side and keep you following with me. Right here, that's how you put the bracketry on per the instructions. So, uh, there you go. Let me see if I can get out. It's hard to sit up with this. But you can see this has got a, a, a wider offset right here versus this side. And that this is the way you're wanting to put it on there. The wider offset that way with a valve pointing to the left if you're looking at it right here. So, exactly like this. And if you buy the kit, you'll have the instructions. Just, I'm just telling you this to clarify and then you put the other bracket on here I mean the instructions are very clear <clears throat> you put this bracket on here with those two little allen heads and uh, and this will lay over top of the axle I'm about to show you dropping in over top of the axle here now and this guy right here will strap it to the axle so that's what you're about to see Figuring out the path for the bag takes a little time the first go around, but after you get it, you uh you, you move along pretty quickly with it. All right, so uh, you see we got that up in here, and uh, she doesn't fit because this cup right here. I imagine we're gonna do some cutting. I don't care about the uh, if this doesn't work all in all. I don't care about the uh, bump stops anyways. It was rotted. I mean, this is what my bump stop was. It's rotted away, so. By cutting this, I'm going to try to just cut this cup first. Take the old Sawzall to her, nothing fancy. Cut the cup off and see if this bracket here to here will fit in between this, maybe with the little grind in there, there. And if anything, that'll kind of keep it in place while I drill the holes too for it. All right ran into one more issue you can see we got her sitting right there we'll have to bolt that down to close that gap no big deal you can uh so we'll have to mark our holes and drill them out or whatnot after we get everything real good in peach plum peach apple pear tree something other um but i think i'm gonna grind on each side of this to which there is some wiggle room right here you can see it already it has a little wiggle room but here's our other, our next ugh, filler right here. So you can see how it's sitting on that guy right there. But really and truly, the shock weld ends right here. And that peak really ain't 
doing nothing. You can see on this one right here, see that's the peak over there that's messing with us. So I'm gonna cut that from the top of the weld on a cross because that, that literally, I mean, that's just extra meat. There's nothing tying into the axle tube. It's not gonna hurt anything. You're probably gonna hear that a lot when I cut a lot off this vehicle. It's not gonna hurt nothing, but this is true. This is true though, I messed up. It, uh, that, that, that won't hurt nothing. So I'm gonna take it off and zoom that off and see what's next on the I don't fit list. something earlier in the video I definitely had this bag bolted on wrong I had it bolted on that spot right there and I needed it in that one to get the bag better vertically or whatnot it's still not perfect but it's pretty good actually it was sinking into itself that's uh it will I mean it's pretty good for where it is actually not bad at all it's got a little slope back there but uh I'm gonna bend this tab right here I'm gonna put it in the vise and hammer it down just a little bit out on the end to try to close this gap right here, make it fit a little bit better. Instead of just putting a bolt in there and hammering down on it, I don't want it to try to rip through the frame or anything. I kind of just want it to <clears throat> kiss up a little bit. So I'm gonna bend that down and I've got my holes marked to drill out, but it's all, it's sitting on there good. That cutting out of the shock bracket right there cleared plenty of room. See, it's not nowhere near hitting and it's sitting flush everywhere and that'll do its job right there. All right, over on the driver's side, I uh, went ahead and chopped the cup off and removed this brake hanger right here. We'll, we'll figure out where to put the brake hanger later. And I've also unbolted the brake line to move it back because we need to do the same thing to the top of that shock perch right there. So we'll chop him off. And uh, right here, the reason I went ahead and jumped to this side is because how close this fuel tank is right here. I wanted to make sure it fit. And I threw this together just hand tight and threw it up in there and it did fit. I'll show you once I get her back up in there, but I need to trim that corner off right there to give me some clearance to go in with the bracket to stay away from that fuel tank. And that, you see the bolt holes way over here. That's, hell, I could cut out to right here and it wouldn't hurt nothing. So I'm gonna chop that off and smooth it up and we'll retest fit and uh chop that top shock bracket off all right getting somewhere now getting somewhere you can see we got clearance in between the corner of the tank and the corners of the bracket now she's sitting pretty vertical and it's sitting down, come on, get my eyes in focus, not the camera, my eyes. It's sitting down on the plate now, so uh, no big deal. It looks like for the uh, little U-bolt thing right here, I may have to move this bracket, the e-brake cable bracket a little bit, do a little shifting around. We'll address that. But we're making it work. So, so far, a Sawzall is the special tool I need. Um, saw, sawzall and a grinder. Knock that off. You saws all that off. Um, over there, I bent this ear. I haven't bolted it back on to see, but I'll probably bend this ear too. Down a little bit right here to make it fit this curvature just a tick better. Other than that, we're going to bolt her up and let her go.
All right, we got our top holes drilled and uh, dropped bolts through there. Now, this one is drilled real tight. I had to do a little slop on this one to get it just right to get it to where it drop in or whatnot, but it's it's not gonna hurt nothing. So if you can't get it by just drilling because the angles that you're at, see I used, let's see, I got one right here. I got one of these little 90 degree bits I use for work doing heat and air conditioning. And uh, right there, oh, let's see. There's some of the chucks at. Yeah, here's one I used. The uh, Milwaukee drill bits, you can put them in those quarter chucks. That is the easiest way to do this right here, but I've killed some drill bits in the past, so I didn't have the right ones. So we went with this extendo right here in the drill. And then after everything, I took a little burr bit to it. But none of that would be needed if you just had you a good one of these and a good set of these. Um, See, it's a little, and I get these, they, they're on sale at Home Depot for 20 bucks and they're great drill bits. It's just, I, I've had these for six months and I've killed them. So, uh, right there, that, that would have been the easiest go-to for drilling the holes up there because of the limited space over top of the axle. Or, I thought about it, you could also jack up the rear end of the vehicle. Like on the hitch right here, leave the jack stands and separate it give you some separation between the axle and the frame and you might be able to fit a drill in there. You can try that. That's just the way we uh, went about it. All right, so I drilled the holes out where I marked it and that little bit of bending, it made it fit pretty good. It's just a tight little corner you see light through, but uh, the holes are dropped through there and it's just sitting on the perch right now. So my daughter was out here helping me and I had the bolts laying right there. Good old GMT 800 rust. I had the bolts right there and my daughter ran off with the bolts. So I'm going to stop by Lowe's tomorrow and uh, pick up some more carriage bolts. But she's in there and it's sitting good and vertical every way. Like from behind it, it's not sagging on any side. So both sides are in here, meow. Walk on over here. This one's fully bolted up and done. Just needs the airline, and I'm gonna run the airline from this sweet ass little kazoo air compressor. So, get some carriage bolts, and the bags are fully on there. I hope this helps somebody get the bags on there. So, it is doable. That's good and vertical. It's not gonna touch anything, it's not gonna hurt anything. So, good to go. Now that we got the bags done, we're gonna move on to the compressor, getting it situated. They say put it in right here. Moist free environment away from harm's way and a Yukon, I imagine that's gonna be back here, right here. To get this off, I pulled the little twist knob off right here and then got a clip remover, clip, uh, removed that and just gave it some pulls and uh, removed the top pillar thing, gave it some pulls, the clips out of there. You can see it's just got those push clips in there. So you pull that out and I've got that back there. And you get up under there and you can see this pocket from there. You peel the insulation back and it's nothing but metal. No, no mess or nothing. You can figure out where you're at. So I'm going to put this thing up on a lift because I'm tired of laying down. But you should be able to do it laying down, no problem. That's where my switch panel ended up being right here. It's not in my way of my feet or anything. I'm a little guy, so might bother somebody who has bigger legs or whatnot. You see she's hooked up in the back right here, and it goes up with the rest of the wires. And I came through. It's up and behind here. I'll go through the dash and show you exactly where I came. Because you have to push through back off the firewall to get that grommet out anyways. But I came through the drive-by wire grommet. Made a little cut and uh, came through it. So you let me get the hood part. There we go. So I came through that grommet right there. You see I got silicone gobbed everywhere on there or whatnot. Just put some on a glove and gobbed it around everywhere. So that's that. I didn't have to drill any extra holes into the cab. Used a factory grommet and uh, got my wiring harness. Dog getting in the truck. Got my wiring harness uh, all zip tied up and uh, the airline zip tied up going with the factory 
can't see it from here. I got it in the next clip, I'm pretty sure, but we go along with the factory wiring harness and everything, and she's zip tied up plenty. There's the uh, pressure switch. And it goes on with the factory wiring harness, so should be safe. But uh, there's my wiring and my uh, pump line going up into that cavern that I was talking about earlier. And uh, I got a grommet in there. I'm gonna either, I'm probably gonna get some body sealer or silicone or something other and seal that up when we're all done. And it, I run it with the uh, factory wiring harness. So you see, it goes along the frame, up through there. I went beside the mounts with the harness. And there's a little uh, solenoid valve. So it's zip tied up, it's all good and sturdy. Use probably 50, 11 zip ties on this. It goes up through there. All right, for testing purposes, you see we got the Bobcat skid steer here. She's got some, a little bit of squat to her, not as bad as I thought, and it's all up on the tongue, which it has to be because the bucket's about at the back of the trailer on this unit right here. Trailer's definitely rated for the weight, no big deal. Truck's probably not rated for what we're doing but it'll be okay we do stuff that we're not supposed to do every now and again appreciate it, roxy well, let's get this thing pumped up i'm gonna go up to uh 50 pounds and let you see how it sits and uh i'll do a uh i think it'll be a real-time video i don't think it'll be too long You can see that's a lot better. It's got this thing sitting good and level. Chains are actually off the ground. The dog's tongue's not off the ground by much. But uh, yeah, that, that'll do good. That's 50 pounds. She holds the pressure. When you get the pressure there, I'll take you and show you the switch. Get the pressure there. She holds just fine. I did have one air leak to where I used Teflon going into the uh, top of the bag on the fitting and I took it back out and used the uh what you call pipe dope or whatnot thread thread sealant for uh, gas piping we use in air conditioning and she was golden right here to let it down you drop her on down and the cool thing about this you read about them you don't want to keep your bag or you don't want to have your bags empty because they'll rip with friction sliding this and that way when the axle's flexing and uh, it'll rip the bag. Right, watch this right here. The uh, air compressor has a sensor in it or the pressure switch won't let it go down too low and it keeps it pumped up just a little bit where it'll keep the bag safe. So that's it. It's not exactly a DIY. It might not be the clearest. I did jump around, skip around. I messed up, but that's how it goes when this is my first go around on doing this. So hopefully it'll help y'all. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing. Tell your mom and them about us.